Hi guys, it's May from Rehab You Movement and Performance Therapy. Welcome to the Pick My Brain segment of the blog, episode three. Um, really enjoying this segment so far. If you do have questions you want to ask me, please send them to me, uh, direct message, either via Instagram or Facebook, and I will do my best to answer them in one of the next episodes of the Pick My Brain segment. Um, episode three, first question was from Nonor Dax on Instagram. Hi, please share more videos in French. I like your French accent. So <laughs> he's from France um, and the French accent in France is very different from the French accent in Quebec. So when he refers to my French accent, he's referring to my Quebec accent. Um, which is kind of funny because, you know, we, we tend to find that our, ac our accent isn't so nice when we compare to uh, the French from France. I was in France recently uh, teaching my course and I said to them, if I, you know, if I say something that makes no sense, <laughs> please let me know. Um, not so much about accent, but about expressions that we use. So for example, every time we needed to take a bathroom break, in French, I always use the expression salle de bain. Um, but for them in France, if you talk about the salle de bain, it means that you're going to take your shower. So every time I said, let's take a break for the salle de bain, this guy was like, oh, she wants us to go take a shower. Anyway, that was the running, the running gag of the weekend. Um, so yeah, uh, Nonor Dax, there are some uh, videos in French on uh, Expertise 360. So if you want to see some videos in French, you can get some there. I'll do my best to throw in some French words once in a while on my blog. Um, question number two, uh, I have had muscular pain in predominantly my lumbar spine for a long time. What rehab moves, exercises do you recommend? And this is from Ash Pichem, uh, which came on Instagram. So sorry guys, sometimes I may be massacring your usernames on Instagram. I do my best. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, Ash Pichem, I asked the question, well, um, is it muscular pain, are you certain, or, you know, is there any um, structural pathology? Um, and the answer was that no, uh, tests had been done, um, x-rays had been done, MRI had been done, and no structural pathology, but it was more what I would call movement-related low back pain. So essentially, um, this is the kind of an, a, a question that's hard to answer generically, like what exercises I would recommend, um, because obviously what exercise I recommend is going to be very individual. So for me, rehab is training, so it needs to be individualized the same way that we indiv individualize training. So, you know, you can have a multitude of exercises that you can use to rebuild a low back or correct movement that's contributing to uh, an, an issue with the low back, um, but why you use XYZ exercise uh, is going to be dependent on which exercise fits best for that person. So difficult answer to, to question to answer generically, um, but what I will say is that when I built the low back fix program that's on the, uh, the website, what I did is I built it in three phases uh, of what we need to reteach or reprogram in terms of movement that can help relieve the lower back of undue stress. So if it's a movement related low back uh, issue, a lot of the times it's because of the way uh, we move that increases load on the low back. Not that we don't want to load the low back and that's, that's an issue with low back pain that I see a lot also is that people um, avoid too much stuff and end up under loading the back and decreasing its tolerance and then it's even harder to build back, right? So the low back fix program is built so that you continue to load your lower back, but reprogram movement so that you can have load that's evenly distributed within the hips, pelvis, low back, and that it's not just your low back working. So phase one of um, fixing the lower back from a movement related perspective um, is reestablish lumbopelvic function. So how the hips, pelvis, and lumbar spine interact together. There's a natural movement that needs to, to occur. Um, and then there's movement, there's, there's stability, or the ability to limit natural movement, or limit mobility, to uh, manage load. Okay, and that's often about reorganizing how the hips work with the low back. 
So if we talk about the hip hinge, for example, it's about understanding hip extension, uh, understanding the timing of the hips and the torso and how that needs to move, what needs to move, dissociating movement of the hips from movement of the pelvis and vice versa. Okay, so any exercises that help gain awareness of hip extension, gain awareness of the movement, the torso, the timing of the hips and the torso are the kind of exercises that you need to rebuild first. So that would be like the phase one of fixing the lower back. Then in phase two of fixing the lower back, we look at frontal plane stability. So lateral stability of the pelvis. So now we're talking about our glutes. Now we're talking about um, loaded carries and things like that. So lateral stability of the pelvis, which you know, has been shown to be related to uh, low back pain. Okay? I think two tests that are um, correlated to low back pain in a lot of studies are pain with active straight leg raise um, and pain with active hip abduction, okay? where the pelvis is not maintained stable in both of those tests. So frontal plane stability or lateral stability of the pelvis is kind of phase two of fixing movement related low back pain. So carries, uneven carries, working that anti-lateral flexion um, is what you'll find in phase two of, for example, the low back fix program. And then in phase three, phase three is about direct low back work. So as I said, you know, we want the low back to work and we want to progress people back to being able to tolerate load for the low back. So for me, being able to deadlift, being able to do some sort of variation of the deadlift, and I'm talking about the deadlift exercise now, I'm not talking about the ability to hinge the hips, I'm talking about actually lifting load using the deadlift exercise or a variation of it, kettlebell deadlift, trap bar deadlift, assuming it's done right because most people call it a trap bar deadlift, but are doing a trap bar squat. But that's for another, <laughs> that's for another rant. Um, so being able to load the deadlift or load the lower back using a variation of the deadlift to me is a fundamental. We need the lower back to be able to tolerate load. We need it to be strong. If you're strong, you're resilient. So phase three of fixing low back movement issues is direct low back work and actually strengthening the low back work. Uh, the strengthening the low back. Okay, so that's probably the best answer I can give to what exercises I would recommend. Um, again, it's very individual. There are a ton of them in the low back fix, um, but the general idea of phase one, lumbopelvic function and hip extension, phase two, frontal plane stability, lateral stability of the pelvis, and phase three, let's load and strengthen that lower back would be my course of action to fix low back, um, movement related low back pain. So hopefully that answers your question and uh, stay tuned everyone for next episode of Pick My Brain.